Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to a brand new class. Yes, this is a brand new class of Philippians chapter 2. And once again, Brother Jorge is here with me. How are you, Jorge? I'm doing well. I got sick a little bit, but I'm doing a lot better now. <laughs> but you're doing a lot better now. That, that's, what, that's what matters. We're so happy to be here uh, sharing this space one more time and entering what is chapter 2, A Humble Living in Light of Jesus' uh, Humble Example. And we're going to enter into section C. And just to tell you, it's only three. Yes, you heard it right. Three verses only. So we're going to look at these verses now. So let us go into verse 9. I had, I had to move it because I don't have my laptop here with me. We're, we're in a chill zone right now. <laughs> we're entering that Christmas season. So we, yeah. we have to go into chill. No tables right now. Okay? Nope. No clump. <laughs> no clutter. No, no time to set up. No time to set up. So, so uh, if you can read verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Now, just a little bit of recap. In the verses before, we were looking that he humbled himself, mm -hmm. right? And, was, and he obeyed and he was faithful until the death and the death of the cross. So he humbled himself, leaving all his glory. But here... We're going to see that he is the ultimate example of exaltation after humility. So the verse that, he, that, that Jorge read was the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him. Now, this is a general heading for the material that we're, we're going to see in the next three verses. So these words describe how God has exalted Jesus, right? Indeed, highly exalted could also be translated into super exalted, mm -hmm. right? Jesus was super exalted after he fulfilled his mission. I mean, it essentially adding an adjective to make it more grand. More, more emphasis exactly. on it, Exactly, right? like it, saying how much he exalted him. Yeah. How... how it, yeah, how much <laughs> how he much? Makes, There's There's mm. no words to describe it. It, the Greeks, the Greeks tend to do this. They they place a lot of emphasis on mm -hmm. a certain words. And when Paul was writing to the Philippians, he said, "No, I'm going to make it an, an emphasis. Mm -hmm. How highly or super he was exalted." So, Paul says that the Greek elegance imports super exalted or exalted with all exaltation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So again, we go back to it adds emphasis. Yeah. On. I mean, that, that's really what it is. It, and I don't know Hebrew, so yeah. I don't know how, to, how they emphasize things and everything. But in the English language, adding that extra superlative adjective makes him like, this is more important. Yeah. And this is how, why it's so great it's or how bad. Ultimately or, great, you know, when, uh, you, when you add some, uh, uh, a word like that. Yeah. It's like, like I said, it's more grandiose. To yeah. Me. But... It was expected. I mean, it really was. How else are you going to exalt Jesus? In yeah. just Like, oh, he was exalted. Like, no. no. The, the, <laughs> you know, the, it says right there that the father exalted uh -huh. his son. He exalted him after he had done that grand, mm -hmm. you know, th that, that uh, the mission that he yeah, had fulfilled he had his mission. Yeah. yeah, he completed it and he did a, a job well done. Yeah. Right? So, Spurgeon says, now... Just a pause over this thought that Christ did not crown himself, but that his father crowned him. That he did not elevate himself to the throne of majesty, but that his father lifted him there and placed him on his throne. Right? right. So, if we can imagine this, Jesus, you know, ascending to heaven, Making his grand entrance, mm -hmm. I believe that he had more than a standing ovation when he came in. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's like, you did it, you know? Yeah. And the father said, come and sit. Come, you sit on the throne. You deserve it, right? You have earned it. You've earned it. And he did it in flying colors, like we say, mm -hmm. you know? How many of us would, would you know, some, some people like the recognition. Right. We, we like being recognized. For what we do but some people do a lot but they don't like being recognized mm -hmm. right so 
And they say, well, I, I don't like the recognition. I'm just doing the work. Jesus didn't do it for the recognition. Mm -mm. He did it for the souls. He did it for mm -hmm. all those people, you and I, mm -hmm. that we were going to be here, sitting right here, recording this for all our brothers and mm -hmm. sisters and talking about this exact same moment in which has transformed our lives mm -hmm. when he defeated death and he's now sitting at the right hand of God, mm -hmm. which he has exalted him because of that. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't looking for any recognition no. for himself, no. but the father recognized him. So mm -hmm. that's like, it's when, you, it's, it's, it's when your dad gives you a good compliment. Yeah. You did good. And really, it coming from someone that important and that valuable. Right, right. <clears throat> a parent. A parent, from a parent yeah. is, it does leave a lasting impact because you're like, okay, wow, wow. <laughs> I, I'm being recognized. Yeah. I'm for whatever more, it more is than, more than a teacher or more than a, a mm -hmm. friend when when a parent recognizes you and gives you a good compliment or that you did a good job you're like what? yeah it, it means something like mm -hmm. you said it, it impacts you in a in a positive way mm -hmm. it's like when you when your parent says i'm very proud of you it's like whoa <laughs> it really just is a whoa moment you're like yeah, you're like did, did he really just say that yeah <laughs> i mean <clears throat> it's when your parents are proud at, of you it's for a reason absolutely absolutely it, <clears throat> it, it doesn't necessarily have to be this grand thing like like my parents are proud of my sister because of who she turned out to be mm -hmm. not necessarily because of an accomplishment she did she got her degree no it was no, because of who she became who she became right and that's something that's more valuable and that's what God was saying to Jesus, like, I am proud of what you have done and what you are to become. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you did, nobody else would have done it, but I am exalting you for mm -hmm. that. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is what Spurgeon is saying. Jesus didn't have to just sit on the throne. The father sat him on the throne. Mm -hmm. The father gave him his props. Like mm -hmm. we say, hey, you deserve it. You did it. You set this up. We set it up. You decided to go, here you go. Mm -hmm. You deserve this, right? After he humbled himself, right? Yeah. He exalted. So, given him the name which is above, above every name. This goes beyond giving Jesus the divine name, Yahweh. When we consider the Hebrew concept of the name, it, is also, it, it also implies that God declares that Jesus has a character and person above all mm -hmm. right so this verse which is clear a clear statement of Jesus's deity is a, a powerful ammunition against those who deny the deity of Jesus Christ right yeah so there is no higher name than Yahweh and Jesus has that name right so we, we're going to go into that, but let's, let's just talk about the name. Mm -hmm. Because when you put your name on stuff, it means something. Yeah, legalistic. Legalistically. Mm -hmm. But for, in, in the Old Testament, the name of Yahweh was very <clears throat> important. Well, names in Hebrew, just in general, have a lot of value. A lot of value, it does. they do. So, you know, Jesus being a Jew, the name is has a great value to not only to himself but to society this is who you are yeah and and sometimes uh well you know in, in hebrew or in aramaic the the his name was yeshua mm -hmm. you know and then we see the name that god had is yahweh mm -hmm. but in the old testament that name was revered you know, it was the Most High God, the name of the Most High God, the name that he gave to Moses so he can speak to him. So yeah. when he when he when Pharaoh asked, who sent you? Yahweh sent me. But now in the New Testament, it's not Yahweh anymore. It's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeshua, you know, Yeshua or, or if we want to, you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 
say say it in English terms, uh, Yeshua. It's actually Yeshua, but that was the name that where we can you know mm -hmm. be saved right through Him, mm -hmm. through the name of Jesus, we can all be saved, right. and that's the power that the Father gave to Jesus mm -hmm. because it says. And it's not going to be me anymore because what you set out to do is to recognize or, or, or to reconciliate man mm -hmm. with me through what? Through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So through every name, I'm, I'm going to give you a name that is above every single name out there mm -hmm. that people would recognize, that people right. would revere, that people would actually come and see, right? So that is, Jesus' name is the same. Jesus, we have them in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But those are in the Old Testament, they had Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Basically, God. Yeah. Basically, God. So, we're going to enter into verses 10 and 11. So, let's go verses 10 and 11. What do they say? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now... That this is very important to know. So, the subjection of the whole creation to Jesus. That all at the name of Jesus, every knee should, should bow. Not only is Jesus exalted by the Father, but the whole world is brought into submission to the Son. Mm -hmm. Right? So, Kent says this. Paul does not imply... By a universal, by this a universal salvation, but m this means that every personal being which ultimately confesses Christ at, at Christ's lordship, either with joyful faith or res with resentment and despair, right? It doesn't matter how you confess it, but you need to confess that Jesus is Lord. It it goes back to what Paul was saying that. It doesn't matter how the word of God gets out. Right. Whether it's right. for your own self or for God's will, he doesn't care. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't care how the yeah. word gets out. So in, the, in this case, whether you're in despair or you're going to be in despair yeah. or if you're revering him or honoring him, everyone will know who he is. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, and and that is that is the the point of, of of all of this, you know, if you're in the good times or the bad times, you need to know that Jesus is still Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and that's exactly what what Paul was saying, you know, you may be going through a lot of stuff, but Jesus is still Lord, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in that way. So, we we continue on those in the heaven, and of the earth, and those under the earth. This conveys the absolute totality of all creation, recognizing the superiority of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? So, in this, in this, Paul draws the idea from Isaiah 45, 23. I have sworn to my, to my, by myself the word that has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that, me, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, uh, shall take an oath. Notice that Isaiah, it is to Yahweh that every that all knee bow, that all knee shall bow, and tongues confess. In Philippians, it is to Jesus, showing that Jesus is Yahweh. Jesus is mm. God, right? So, how amazing it is that Paul used the exact same words mm. that Isaiah was using because Isaiah, you know, gave the prophecy about the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now. Paul says the Messiah came, he died, and now he's sitting at the right hand of, the, of God. But now this is what has been promised, that he is Lord, that he is God, that every knee will bow mm -hmm. before him and they shall confess that he is Lord, mm -hmm. right? So this is something amazing that we can see, uh, brothers and sisters, that Every knee shall bow. Every single being, being in heaven, being on earth, or being under the earth, mm -hmm. they know who the Lord is. Mm -hmm. They know exactly who He is. So, those who are under the earth, either the dead who are hid in the earth and shall raise by the power of Christ, 
or devils or wicked souls. This is what Poole says. So right here we're going to stop, but we need to we need to explain what's going on here. And next week we'll, we'll, we'll start here too. So those who are dead, those who went off with the mm-hmm. Lord, they recognize that he is Lord. Right. And they're going to be what? What's going to happen? Those who are dead in Christ, they should resurrect mm-hmm. first. That's what the Bible says. They know who is he is Lord. But also, if you remember, and we're going to touch about this next week, those who went before Jesus came, he went to them mm-hmm. when he died. And he preached to them, here's salvation for you. For those who didn't get to hear me before, now you have salvation, right? And then the devil knows who he is. Mm-hmm. The demons know who he is. The devil always knew who he was. Oh, he created him, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So right here, uh, we're, we're in a good place to stop. Mm-hmm. I, I, it feels like it was such a short class, but we're saying a lot of stuff here. And next week, we're going to say a lot more. So with that being said, I just want to thank you right now. Thank you for, for joining us. We want you to have a happy very, and very happy Thanksgiving from us in San Diego New Life. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Be with your family members. Ha- have a great time with them. And please, please stay safe. Don't eat that much. <laughs> we'll see you here on Sunday. Sunday we will have service. But we will see you here next week for more of Philippians chapter 2. Chapter 2, living a humble life like Jesus did. So, And we're going to see more of this uh, uh, sense of victory that he had and that he's still having on today. Because the name uh, in the name of Jesus, we can do all things. And all things are possible through his name. May God bless you. And we'll see you here next week for more of Philippians chapter 2.